I have nothing to do with Russia. Everybody knows it. That was a Democrat hoax. It was an excuse for losing the election. This was Donald Trump at year's end, pushing back against allegations that he is soft on the Kremlin, possibly as a payback to Russia for helping him beat Hillary Clinton for the presidency. In January, two weeks before Trump was sworn in as president, Director of National Intelligence James Clapper's office issued a finding that the CIA, FBI, and NSA had together concluded that Vladimir Putin tried to ensure a Trump victory. Putin, it says, ordered a campaign to denigrate Secretary Clinton and harm her electability, and that Putin developed a clear preference for Trump and aspired to help Trump's election chances by discrediting Clinton. The finding prompted immediate congressional investigations. In March, FBI Director James Comey confirmed that his agency too had a probe, looking into possible collusion between Trump's team and the Kremlin. Soon after, Trump fired Comey. That led to the appointment of special counsel Robert Mueller, whose far-reaching Russia probe has already netted indictments and guilty pleas of several Trump campaign officials on peripheral charges. As president, Trump's words and his deeds have at times seemed to be at odds with each other. He recently approved the sale of lethal weapons for Ukrainian forces fighting Russian-backed separatists and signed into law new sanctions against Moscow for its actions in Ukraine though he called the legislation seriously flawed. But in speeches, he still talks about trying to improve relations with the Kremlin. And I feel that having Russia in a friendly posture, as opposed to always fighting with them, is an asset to the world and an asset to our country, not a liability. His national security strategy casts Russia as a dangerous competitor that seeks to weaken America's global influence using subversive measures to undermine the legitimacy of democracies. But in a speech unveiling the strategy, Trump talked of building a partnership with Putin. Well, yesterday I received a call from President Putin of Russia thanking our country for the intelligence that our CAA was able to provide them concerning a major terrorist attack planned in St. Petersburg, where many people, perhaps in the thousands, could have been killed. They were able to apprehend these terrorists before the event with no loss of life, and that's a great thing, and the way it's supposed to work. Analysts say Russia has become the prism through which Trump's every move is viewed, putting the president in the position of possibly being tougher on the Kremlin than he might otherwise have been. It's almost as if he's trying to overcompensate so that people won't um, assume the worst about him in Vladimir Putin. So you saw recently the uh, measure allowing for the sale of weapons to Ukraine, which was, a, which was something that the Obama administration had blocked for years while Ukraine was being invaded and there's still a war going on in Ukraine. That's a very strong move. Donald Trump's second year in office promises to be, like the first, dominated by Russia, as special counsel Robert Mueller's probe is moving inexorably toward a conclusion. And the president pushes back as he faces off on the world stage with the only person ranked by Forbes magazine as more powerful than he, Vladimir Putin. Peter Heinlein, VOA News, The White House.